It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about securing Home Assistant so that you can access it from outside of your network and feel confident and comfortable that everything's going to be safe and secure. We'll get into it right after this. I just want to remind you all that I have a really cool collaboration coming up with my friend over at Ebracorp. He does some really great videos. He focuses on open source software and using Docker in the background to, to make everything happen. And it's really going to be great. He helps me out with some really cool stuff. So we're going to be covering how to install Jacket, Sonar, Radar, uh, Qubit, Torrent, and really make all of those things work in Docker. And he really goes through it with me step by step. And I'll tell you right now, I was interested in this. He did a video on this, so I highly recommend you go check it out. I'll have a link for it in the show notes and description on this video. Uh, but also, he helps me walk through it from just running it through Portainer. So that's going to be a really cool video. I'm excited about it. Um, we sat for several hours, so I've got a lot of editing to do. But I wanted to remind you about it. Hope you guys will jump on it whenever I let it out there and really enjoy it. And go over and check out his channel as well, Ebracorp, here on YouTube. And I'll put a link in the description. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. Securing access to your home assistant is very, very important if you want to have access to it from outside of your home. So for me, the reason I got into home automation and smart devices, as they call them, is because a few years ago I moved back to where I live now in Del Rio. I moved my parents in with myself and my wife. They're, they're getting older, and we wanted to make sure that we could take care of them and, and have a nice home for them and a place for them to be, but also a place where we could keep them safe. And at the time, I had to travel quite a bit for work. It was supposed to be 25% travel, but it was more like 50 to 60% travel that year, uh, kind of here a week, gone a week kind of thing. And one of the big things that I wanted before I left was to make sure that I could help them with any things that they needed. Home alarm system, I wanted to make sure I had remote access to turn on and off and help them out if they got confused about anything on it. Garage doors to help them get in and out of the house if they happen to lock themselves out somehow. Air conditioning so that I could help them turn on and off air conditioning at certain times of the year. You have to kind of switch between heat and air and these newer air conditioning thermostats can be a little bit confusing. So I wanted to make sure that I could set that and help them with the climate control and things like that. Uh, internet uh, definitely was one where I wanted to make sure they had internet access. Now to, to monitor that is one thing. To fix it when it's broken from a remote position is a different thing. So you just have to kind of know some of the troubleshooting steps to maybe run one of your parents through and make sure that you can explain it in a way that they understand what you're doing. But still being able to monitor that and make sure that things were running smoothly was very important to me. And having a stable internet system at the time was also very important to me. So all of that said, I wanted to be able to access everything I was doing you know, remotely and securely. And at the time, apps seemed to be the best way to go to have a fairly secure connection back to the things in my home. But as I've gotten more into self-hosting and open source software, I've definitely gotten into where I like Home Assistant and I want to use Home Assistant for as much as I possibly can. Now, some of the things that I use connect out to an outside service in order to get them into Home Assistant. You don't have to do that with everything. A lot of these things now have local only access, which is great. Uh, but sometimes you have those services, but when I'm away from home, making sure that I have secure connectivity back to my home assistant setup is very important to me. And there are several ways you can do that in here on the home assistant page, on their, on their wiki, and the home assistant wiki is vast and very informative. Um, so just kind of get out there and search and you're probably going to find something that has what you're looking for. And if it doesn't, then their forums have great, great users, thousands of users that will help you out as much as they can and when they can. But getting back to security, so there's kind of a checklist for security, which is, you know, make sure that you configure your secrets file. So we'll talk about that. Um, and, and then, you know, make sure that you basically have it backed up somewhere. Don't just leave it on your home assistant server. Make sure that you back up that file somewhere. Encrypt it if you can. Um, make sure that it's protected. But make sure that you have a backup of it in case something happens. 
remote access is really what I'm talking about today. And for that, you, you definitely want to look at, there's a few different options. So one is the Home Assistant Cloud. Now this has a little bit of a support cost to it, but this is how they fund continued development for Home Assistant. So if you're up for doing something like this, um, it, it's a really great way, in my opinion, to support the Home Assistant folks and make sure that they can move forward with what they're doing. Um, you don't have to do this, but th this is an option if you want to do it, uh, great. And, and I think it's totally legitimate for open source projects to have options like this where they say this is how we're going to fund continued development. I think it's great. So this is one option right here, Home Assistant Cloud. Um, if we go back to our secure page, they also have DuckDNS integrating Lex Encrypt. So if we, we still haven't done DuckDNS, I need to do a video on that. But DuckDNS basically gives you a dynamic DNS. So if you have a home with internet where the IP address changes on a fairly regular basis, which a lot of ISPs do this, they won't give you static addresses for your home. And they do this to try to dissuade people from running servers at home. Well, for a long time, there's been options to get around that, but you had to be a little bit technical to understand how to do it and why you needed it and things like that. So if you're wanting to run a server at home, you've probably heard of dynamic DNS. Um, and there used to be a service called DinDNS that was free, but now they've kind of gone paid and a lot of people have looked for alternatives. DuckDNS is just such an alternative and they have um, an option where you can go in and create a DuckDNS address. So it'd be something like myhome.duckdns.org or, or whatever. And they have several different domains and then you create your own subdomain as long as it's something easy to remember, something that hopefully isn't so long you don't feel like typing it anytime you have to. Um, but there's going to be some that are taken, of course. So you'll find one that's open, you'll use it, and we'll just pretend like it's myhome.duckdns.org. You set that up and then you use Let's Encrypt um, as well. So you set up the, the URL, you put a service inside of your network that calls out, occasionally says, hey, here's my public IP address today. And that updates DuckDNS and that tells everything, oh, hey, here's where you point now if, if somebody says go to myhome.duckdns.org. So that's where it tries to go to. So basically that dynamic DNS keeps up to date with your changing IP address to try to help you always have an easy way to access your home servers and your home network. Um, then you use Let's Encrypt to encrypt all of that traffic, of course. So you would use Let's Encrypt on top of that DuckDNS uh, uh, domain name. So they have instructions here for that. They have instructions for just using Let's Encrypt. If you don't have an IP address that changes all the time, but you want to use Let's Encrypt coming back into your network, that's a great way to, to encrypt that traffic between your device and, and your home assistant. Um, and then this one's the one that I'm using. This is kind of my favorite. And then SSH tunnels is also extremely secure. But VPN and SSH tunnels are your other options. So I'm using a VPN with a combination of Nginx Proxy Manager. And basically I'm setting that up so that I have access back into my home. So the VPN encrypts my traffic, but it also provides me a public IP address that when I'm connected to my VPN, my Nginx Proxy Manager can detect and say, oh yeah, that IP address is allowed to access this URL. So right now, if I try to go to my, uh, my URL, and I'll type it in here, we're going to sit and wait, and it's going to fail because it's going to say, yeah, you're trying to get to something that you're not allowed to get to, and you're not coming from the right IP address, so I'm not going to let you get there. This is exactly the kind of setup that we want. Here we go bad gateway and that's exactly what I would expect. You're trying to get into something you shouldn't be trying to get into and you're not allowed to get into so I don't get a proper response from Nginx Proxy Manager. So the way I set that up is pretty straightforward. Um, I have Pry Tunnel, which I've done a video on in the past and I'll link to it so that you can see it and get it set up for yourselves if you want to. But I have a Pry Tunnel server running out on DigitalOcean on a VPS for five bucks a month. And basically that's my VPN. So they use OpenVPN and then they use WireGuard as well. And in this case, I'm using OpenVPN uh, for the connection. And then I have the, the OpenVPN client on my phone and I have a, a certificate that I've created from the PryTunnel server and I've pulled down on my phone so that I can connect. So I've got PryTunnel set up and then I just connect and I go into my system. In order to get to my home assistant inside of my network, I have to be on the VPN. And I basically have that set up in a way through my Nginx Proxy Manager that it won't let me get in without being on the VPN because it's checking for the IP address from where my VPN comes from. So if I try to go to my Home Assistant external address, you'll see that it prompts for username and password authentication, um, which 
I can't use because I'm not coming from the right IP address anyway. So I'd have to have both of these. And once it gets that authentication, it's going to tell me this is no good because I'm not coming from the IP address. So I can show you what that looks like. And if I go into my home, into my Nginx proxy manager, we go to 192. In my case, I'm going to go to the IP of my Nginx proxy manager. And I cannot access this from outside of my network either because I don't expose that port. Uh, but you'll see I have my proxy hosts and then here's my home assistant entry. And I can go to edit. And you'll see here I have this instead of publicly accessible, which is what it normally says, I've created an access list rule that says my VPN. And up here I've got it set so that when, I, when it receives this message on the inside network, it goes to the IP address of my home assistant on that port. So here I force SSL, it's a self-signed certificate, but that's a certificate that I'm willing to accept because I know that I created it myself. And then we've got the access list on top of that that says, hey, this is encrypted within the VPN tunnel. So the way that you create that is you go to access lists and you'll create a new access list. And in this case, I've got that one, but we'll say add a new access list. You give it a name and this is my VPN2. And then you kind of say, you can say um, satisfy any if you want to only allow authorized users or the IP address. And in here you would put allowed IP addresses. So this would be the IP address of your um, server, of your VPN server. Because once you're connected to your VPN on your device and you try to go anywhere, it's going to look like you're coming from this public IP address on your server. And that's what I'm saying. You know what, if it comes from my server, allow it because I know it's one of my devices that I've allowed to connect to the VPN. Here, I could also use login credentials separately, but I use them together. So it has to be the server and it has to be my login credentials in order to be able to access this. And then I save this and I have a, a rule that now says, okay, I can go set this up on one of my hosts. So I can go to my hosts and I can edit that host and I can say, I only want to allow access on my VPN too. This has to have me or else you can't get to it. So I can save that and now it's not publicly accessible anymore. It's very specifically accessible by my VPN too. And this one is accessible by my VPN. Once I did that, all I had to do was connect my phone to my VPN and then open up Home Assistant. When I open up Home Assistant, it goes through and it says, hey, I see that you're coming from the right place. I'm going to prompt you for the credentials and you're going to be able to log in. Now I do that through the browser on my phone instead of through the application on my phone. If you want to do it through the application on your phone, you don't want to set up the user authentication. You just want to allow the IP address to let you into the system. But really, that's all there is to it to get a secure connection to Home Assistant on a VPN. So this is a really great way and it's an easy way if you're already running Nginx Proxy Manager, it's a great way to do this. If you're not, I've got videos out there on how to get it installed and how to set it up, but it's an amazing tool that helps you route traffic around your network once you get traffic inside the network. This is kind of the gatekeeper. It's not a firewall. It, it's a routing mechanism for requests to see web pages or web applications. So the request comes to Nginx Proxy Manager and it says, do I have a site with the name that just got requested? Oh, I do. Okay, it needs to go here. Are there any rules that I have to follow before I let that traffic go forward? Oh, there is. Let me go check those rules and make sure that you're meeting those rules. And if you're not, it's going to send you to a bad gateway address. If you are, it's going to send you right on through. If you don't need to have any rules, you can just make it publicly accessible and then you can go to those sites and try to log in or do whatever you do. Also through here, you can get Let's Encrypt certificates very easily just with a click of a button and making sure that you've got the right ports forwarded and everything like that. And that's not ports on your um, outside firewall, but actually ports on your Docker containers, which is what I use this for. And it's really great. So if you haven't seen those videos and you're interested in Nginx Proxy Manager, go check that out as well. But that's how I secure my Home Assistant install for when I'm accessing it away from home. When I'm inside the network, I can just go to it directly through the homeassistant.local um, name and port number and there's no problems. The VPN stuff doesn't bother me. I don't go through Nginx Proxy Manager so it's not looking to see if I'm coming from the right IP address and I'm able to ex access everything internally just like I would any other time. Securing Home Assistant is extremely important if you want to access it from outside your network. I've just shown you the way that I do it but if you're interested in doing it in a different way there is this site out here where they've got all of the different methods that you can use and you can go check out their links to see how to do it that way as well if you're interested in one of those methods. 
I highly recommend if you want to do this, definitely secure your access and make sure that it's very, very secure. I wanted to open up some channels for discussion, so I've created this Rocket Chat server and I've got it mixed up with Jitsi Meet. I've created a few channels already to start up some discussions, but of course we can always open up more channels. If you'd like to jump in and send me a direct message or just ask a question on one of the channels, I'll be monitoring the system. It'll be up and running. I'm going to leave this up and going so that we can have a place where we can all come together and answer each other's questions and have good discussions and good conversations. It's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. Again, that's discuss.opensourceisawesome.com. I'll have the links in the show notes and the description. I'll have links in the show notes and the description as always. If you enjoyed this, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us and I'll talk to you next time.